Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshick of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our fly casting episodes. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the double haul. Probably the most anticipated episode in this series, and probably the most important. The double haul is an absolutely critical, critical ingredient that you need to add in after you've gotten the basics of the casting stroke with the rod down pat. The double haul is basically the addition of a short little pull with your opposite hand. And what this does is it essentially greatly increases the line speed allowing the rod to do less work and therefore will be more accurate and in fact way more accurate. As you've may heard us say before and we've heard it from the man himself Flip Pallet, um, the story goes that I was on a boat with Flip many many years ago in the 90s and Flip kind of got irritated with my casting and he said to me, Brian why are you trying to cast with the rod? And he said, you don't cast with a fly rod. The fly rod is an overpriced pointing tool. And he said to me, you cast with your opposite hand. And he's 100% right. So let's head on over to Flip's front porch, where Flip and I recently got to hang out and talk about double hauling. And you said the fly rod is nothing but an overpriced pointing tool and you said you cast with your opposite hand in reference to the hull and once I started learning that and applying it and I realized that now obviously that's a little bit over the top and I love to say that in classes because it is over the top but then people finally start to get it that the rod, if you can think of the rod as just a pointer that tells it where to go and you form the loop and the speed comes mostly from this hand, you instantly see people become better casters, myself included. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the left hand plays a huge role even if you don't haul. Because if you're holding the line in your left hand as you make a back cast, the separation of your hand from the hand that's holding the line is a haul. Mm -hmm. As you do this, if you don't haul at all, as you do this, you're, you're actually making a haul. When you want extra speed, extra boost, it all comes from the left hand. The, your casting stroke should never change. Your casting stroke is your casting stroke. If you yep. want more, it comes from the left hand. Mm -hmm. And the dynamics of that are interesting to understand, and maybe we talk about that at a different time, how, what the hall actually does, how, how it helps and how it provides the extra boost, because you're doing it here, but the boost is coming from the rod tip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and how that happens is a whole nother subject, but, but it's, it's, it's for sure that extra speed, extra distance comes from your left hand. Your right hand does the same thing all the time, which as you said is telling the cast yeah. where it wants to go. Exactly where to go. This tells it how fast to get there. A lot of the propulsion for a cast comes from your left hand. The casting stroke with your right hand or your casting hand should never change. You always do basically the same thing to form a loop mm -hmm. and direct a cast, but you can add a tremendous amount of line speed and distance with your left hand using a haul if it's done properly. Yeah. Um, in many cases that I observe, uh, the hall is overused mm -hmm. 
and uh, done incorrectly. Yes. Uh, but basically, that's the, the truth is, what you do with your casting hand to form a loop and direct the cast pretty much never changes. Right. You don't do it harder to go further. You get distance and speed with your left hand. And that's what I see a lot is people try, they try to cast into the wind and they push it harder and it really should be here. Yes. You know what? We can stand here and talk about it. You mind if we go and you show us a little bit about Absolutely. how the proper way to be to Absolutely. Do Let's go. In most situations, the double haul takes place close to the rod and it's a short double haul and it can be faster or slower, faster or slower, depending on what you want the cast to look like. But it's important that you understand this is the supercharger of your cast. And the way that it actually works is the line is being pulled at right angles when you're making a forward cast, for example. The rod is moving forward and it's bent backwards by the weight of the fly line and the re wind resistance of the fly line. And as it begins to load, if you haul, see what happens to that tip? You super load the tip with the haul and it all happens by friction at this point right here on the tip top. So you're coming forward with your forward cast, rod loaded, all of a sudden you double haul or haul and you super load the tip of the rod and then it fires off your loop. The less you can do with the fly rod, and then more you can do with your opposite hand, your non-casting hand, the better off you're gonna be, the more efficient you're gonna be, the more accurate you're gonna be, and you're gonna cast, dare I say, just like butter. So the double haul, um, I don't care whether you're casting with a two weight and throwing a little dry fly, or you're casting a tarpon fly with a 12 weight, the double haul should be at least 50% and in some cases, if you really get good, the double haul can be as much as 90% of your cast. I've heard people say that, oh, the double haul is just for distance. Not true. Oh, the double haul is just for salt water. Oh, not true. Of course, we live in Ohio, and I heard somebody say one time, well, you don't need a double haul in Ohio. Well, friends, the double haul should be at least 50% of every cast you ever make, no matter what you're fishing for or no matter where you are fishing. So the double haul, it is basically a simultaneous mirror image application of speed to the fly line, which thus pulls on the tip of the fly rod, okay? but it's, it's nothing more than basically a short little pull with this with your opposite hand. A short little pull and a short little pull, okay? I say simultaneous mirror image, okay? So when you're coming back and then you begin to form your loop, let's remember that this is a 90 degree angle right here. You're gonna have a quick snap of the wrist right here before you stop right before you get to that, say, one o'clock position to create that 90 degree angle with your rod tip. So if you go boom and your thumb goes that far, at the same exact time, this hand should go exactly that far, okay? Let me demonstrate it here. You're gonna get it moving and you're going to speed up and stop. The hands have to stop at the same time, and theoretically, the distance that that rod tip travels and the distance that your opposite hand travels should be exact and mirror images. That's how this works, okay? So you get it moving, and you go boom. And then immediately after you stop with this hand, this hand has to bounce back right back up. This is the part that a lot of people have trouble with. We go. Ba-boom, and that hand bounces right back up, okay? 
And now, here comes the double part. You're going to do the exact same thing coming forward. You're going to allow that rod to drift back ever so slightly. And then you're coming forward. And at that same time that you, boom, you throw the dart, you hammer the nail, you apply that little wrist snap to the tip of the rod with your thumb, you're going to go, boom, and allow that hand to catch up again. I often use a little saying, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, okay? And friends, what this is doing is as you pull, as you pull with, in my case, your left hand, as you pull, it causes the rod tip to bend further this way, which then causes it to bend further this way. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So we're priming the pump. We're making the rod tip go this way so that when it completely stops, it goes a little bit harder this way, thus creating more line speed. You're gonna tighten your loops, and this is an absolutely critical component, a critical ingredient in the recipe of fly casting. Again, no matter what you're trying to throw, but especially if you're throwing heavy flies, big flies, you're casting into the wind, uh, you're throwing sink tips or sinking fly lines, sink tips or sinking fly lines, you absolutely have to double hold. Okay? So, I mentioned before, don't cast with the rod cast with this hand. The rod just tells it what direction to go. Let me show you something. I'm going to make a fly cast here and I'm going to put the fly rod under my arm. I'm going to put my right hand in my pocket and I'm going to cast mostly, I'm going to use my body, okay, to tell the rod where to go and I'm going to make most of the cast with this hand. Watch. I'm going to pull catch up and pull catch up. And you see all that line I just shot right there? I have people that email me every day telling me they can't cast more than 20 foot. Well, stop trying to use the rod and learn how to double haul. Start low, get it moving, speed up and stop, speed up and stop. I just made most of that cast. The rod just told it what direction to go. Now, when you sprinkle in a good fly cast, you're going to find pull catch up, pull catch up, the hands go apart together, apart together, and the line is right there, ready to go under your index finger and start to fish. So again, pull, catch up, pull, catch up. And it doesn't need to be this gigantic haul. I've, I've had instructors, I've had people try, when I was first learning how to double haul, I had a guy that would told me to rip it down to my thigh, just rip it. And I was going that far with this hand, and I was going this far with this hand. It was way out of whack, okay? Once you get this, once you get this set up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up. It's absolutely simple. It doesn't have to be this big jerk. It's just a simple little tug on the fly line. Tug, catch up, tug, catch up, lay the rod down, and the hands are back together, okay? Here's a neat way to practice this when you're first getting started doing this. Lay the fly rod out to the side as like this, okay? Lay the fly rod out to the side like this and you're gonna make an up cast and a down cast, but you're gonna lay it on the ground in between, okay? So <clears throat> do it one step at a time. You're gonna go back and you're gonna go pull, catch up and lay it on the ground. Okay, and you should be in about that one o'clock position. You won't necessarily have to drift backwards because the line is on the ground and not moving. And then you're gonna go pull, catch up. And this can really, really help you learn what this left hand does and how this left hand essentially pulls the rod tip to a stop. This hand pulls, pull the rod tip to a stop. Pull the rod tip to a stop pull the rod tip to a stop. 
I often tell people once they start to get the hang of it, pull your loop tight. Pull that loop tight. Make that loop tighter by pulling out with your opposite hand. So you practice this a bit, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, lay it on the ground, pull, catch up. And then eventually you start to speed up that rhythm, pick it up off the ground, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, pull, catch up, boom, boom. And once you get this, it's just like butter. Now, you've heard me say this before, but make sure that when you go to shoot the line, okay, you're going to pull, catch up, pull, catch up, and then you're going to let go of the line, but don't let go of it willy-nilly. It's going to wrap all around your rat. Use your, this hand to kind of cup the line, almost like an additional stripping guard or, um, uh, stri yeah, stripping guard there. Boom, boom. Allow it to shoot through your hands like this. That way the line doesn't get all tangled around the rod and then you're poised and ready to put the line under the index finger and start to fish. Whether you're drifting or stripping, however you're retrieving your fly, the line has to go under your index finger. So pull, catch up, pull, catch up. I know I've said it a million times, but go out and practice this. Um, the double haul is an absolutely critical component to becoming a very good fly caster. Well friends, as always, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode and hit that like button and be sure to stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming at you in this fly casting series. We want to see you all be excellent, efficient fly casters. So as always, thanks again for being here and stay tuned. Oh, be sure Go out right now, right now, and practice your double haul. Get it down until it's just like butter. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.